Flying skydivers is a blast. It's a good way to build flight time and a fantastic way to improve your stick and rudder skills. But dropping meat bombs has one particular risk that's unique to this form of aviation. That's the risk that one of the skydivers has a premature parachute deployment while he's still hanging onto the airplane. Because if that happens, there's a good chance the parachute can hit the tail and damage it, and the damage might be so severe that the plane becomes unflyable. And that's what happened last Saturday, May 25th, at 14,000 feet over Butler, Missouri. What happened was six skydivers took off in a turbine-converted Cessna 206 for a routine skydive. When they got to altitude, they started climbing out, and one of the skydivers apparently had his reserve handle snag on something, which deployed the reserve, which unfortunately hit the tail and damaged it to such an extent that the plane became unflyable. Now, fortunately, all the skydivers were able to get out safely, leaving the pilot to try to control the airplane, which apparently was unable to do. The report has it that it went into an inverted flat spin, and at that point, he decided to leave. And that had to be one hell of a ride. I mean, imagine, you're flying along on a beautiful sunny Saturday, flying jumpers, having a blast, when suddenly there's a bang, a lot of yelling, and then the plane flips upside down. Terrifying. Now, at that point, he's got to get out of the airplane, which is easier said than done. Because once you let go of the controls and this plane starts spinning out of control, the G-forces can build up really quickly, making it dang near impossible to get out of the airplane. Now, this happened to a pilot in New Zealand a bunch of years ago. He was flying a caravan, and one of the pilots had a premature deployment, damaged the tail. This was at 5,000 feet, and... He got control of the airplane, was able to kind of control it enough that all the jumpers got out. And when he let go of the controls to get out himself, the plane entered a, entered a very strong spin. And he said the G-forces were so strong, he was barely, barely able to get out of the plane. And when he got to the door, the door had closed because of the G-forces. And it took all of his strength to get the door open just enough that he was able to squeeze out of it, get clear of the airplane, open his parachute just before impact. So this is definitely something that scares every jump pilot. And in the 206, it's particularly hard because the door that the jumpers use is in the back of the airplane. So he has to get out of his seat, climb to the back of the airplane, roll out, and hopefully not hit the tail. Now, if this guy was also a non-skydiver, which a lot of jump pilots are, this had to scare the hell out of him. I mean, imagine that's your first jump ever. And if he is a skydiver, he had a particular thing that would make it even a little more scary because he knows he only has one parachute, and that's one chance to save his life. And that scares a skydiver particularly because we always jump with two parachutes, a main and a reserve. And that way, if the first parachute, the main parachute, malfunctions, you can cut it away and go to your reserve. You know, you got two shots at it. Having only one parachute to save your life can be a little disconcerting. And I know that for a fact because this exact same thing happened to me on Saturday, the same day of the crash. Now, I didn't have an aircraft emergency. What happened to me was I was training new freefall instructors on how to catch and save out-of-control freefall students. And I jumped out with a couple of uh, instructor candidates who were going to practice grabbing me while I was spinning on my back and flipping me over and saving me. And I got the whole thing on video. Now here you can see me on my back spinning out of control and the two candidates trying to catch me when one of them kind of hits me hard from above and accidentally dislodging my main parachute cutaway handle. That's the handle you pull if your main parachute malfunctions and it releases the parachute from your harness, allowing you to then open your reserve. Now as soon as I saw that handle leave, I knew that my main parachute was now unusable. I mean, I could open it up but it was just going to leave my harness the second it did so there's no sense in using that. So I got the two candidates away from me and I free fell down to about 3,000 feet, 2,500 feet before pulling my reserve. And even though I wasn't particularly worried that the reserve might not open, I mean I've used it I think that was number 31 in 38 years, I was still pretty happy to see that reserve 
finally be fully open, as I'm sure the pilot in the plane at Butler was. So there is on one of the rollover spinning on my back and one of the candidates reached over and instead of grabbing a lift web to flip me over, they pulled my cutaway handle. I think it was Danny. Or no, I don't know. I wasn't I wasn't in time to grab it. It hung there for a second and I reached and it was gone. Like right away. So yeah, not only did I have to pull my reserve chute to save my life, but I lost my cutaway handle, which now means my rig's down until I get a new one. Yeah. Oh well. It's always fun. No one got hurt. Now, even though it was a shame that this beautiful plane was destroyed, it was still a miraculous outcome that nobody got hurt. All the skydivers got out of the plane, the pilot got out of the plane and opened a chute, and even the, per the skydiver whose reserve shredded the tail, almost ripped the tail off from what I hear, his reserve still worked enough that he was able to land it. Or there's a possibility that he opened his main and landed that and they didn't get tangled up. Don't really know at this point, but if I hear anything, I'll let you guys know. There's probably video out there Every skydiver's got a camera on his helmet now, so I'm sure video would be showing up. But nobody got hurt, and nobody got hurt on the ground because the plane crash-landed in an open field. Nobody was injured on the ground, no property damage. Lucky all the way around. Well, lucky for everybody except the skydiving school who's, I think, just got this plane and just reopened their school after having been, been closed for almost a year. So that one's got to hurt. Anyway, that's all I've got for now. As always, don't forget to keep your speed up. And next time you're climbing out of a plane at 14,000 feet, try and protect your handles.